<sighs> okay, so you're feeling happy. Do you want to get mad? I have just the medicine for that. You should read the book Invisible Women by Caroline Criado Perez. I'm going to read you just a sentence about the book and see if, if that does the trick. Imagine a world where your phone is too big for your hands. Your doctor d prescribes drugs that aren't right for your body. And in a car accident, you are 47% more likely to get injured. Does any of that sound familiar? Chances are you're a woman. What the? That's, can't, we can't have that. I mean, since almost everything was designed originally for men, we need some change in how we build things, how we design stuff. And we need more people paying attention to what's happening in medical science. Because in medical science, all the trials are done on male bodies. Even the lab mice are male. We, we need to start paying attention. And that paying attention starts right now. We are going beyond body, like beyond our bodies. And our first speaker in this session is incredible. So I want to know, how do you feel about antibiotics resistance? Terrified? Well, yes, that's the right answer, but not our next speaker, because she's actually trying to fix it. She is making a real difference when it comes to antibiotics resistance, because she is a scientist and entrepreneur. She has just finished some badass PhD studies in materials science. And she has invented, invented an antibacterial platform that is kind of a medical breakthrough. And it is the core piece in the Band-Aid that her company is manu starting to manufacture. She is here with us today. Please welcome Saba Atefika. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. Hi, beautiful people. Thanks for having me today. Uh, I'm so honored and flattered to stand on this scene and present to you what we do at Amferia, our technology, our goals and vision. And I'm going to scare you a little bit more about antibiotic resistance. So I'm going to use this first. So have you ever looked at what is the most common fears that people in the world experience. I did that uh, a week ago, and I came up with two things that were really, yeah, people talked about it a lot. One is social fears, like public speaking. And the second is the fear of dying. Apparently, I'm not scared of the first one, or if I am, you will never know, trust me. But the second one, to be honest, I'm not scared of dying either. I'm sure many of you, uh, some of you also agree with me on that, because that's gonna happen at some point. What I'm most scared of is how the quality of my life is going to be, why I live. And also I'm scared of being ignorant about the serious threat that you're putting our world into and affecting our world and our children. Generally, there has been improvements. Think about past centuries and how the quality of life has been changed. Our understanding of human body and science that helps us to come up with treatments and medical technology advancement that were unimaginable before. And the result is that we not only live longer today, but we have quite a better quality of life. For example, if you think about the pre-antibiotic era, which was happening before 1900, what was happening at that time was that people could die of very simple infection that we cannot even think of today. Everything changed after Alexander Fleming in 1928 discovered penicillin. And that was the beginning of a revolution 
to make medicines, antibiotic medicines, that could save many lives by that time. And it did that. What was, how was that affecting our lives now? The effect is that, sure, we rely on antibiotics. We still do that. And we rely on that highly to treat any kinds of infection. We cannot even imagine a world without them, right? But something we have missed in this journey. Let's go back to Alexander Fleming. He warned us. Only a couple, couple of years after he discovered penicillin, and he was receiving a Nobel Prize right here in Stockholm. He warned people about antibiotic resistance, and he said that the ignorant man will misuse antibiotic and make bacteria resistant to that. And what he predicted that day, we call antibiotic resistant crisis today. We didn't take him seriously, but all we know is that when bacteria are exposed to antibiotics, due to an evolutionary process. They can develop genes that help them to survive that treatment. They can pass along those genes to make a full generation of antibiotic-resistant bacteria. That will not respond to that antibiotic anymore. And this phenomenon was before only seen in hospitals with a patient that were severely ill, some cases here and there, but now it's in whole society, is among us people. Believe it or not, it's among us. And for example, this is very interesting. I mean, maybe I should not call that interesting, more scary. This is a script of a patient, recent one, that hasn't been responding to any antibiotic. Look at there, colistin. That's the last reserve of antibiotic we have. And this is not just one case. It's going to happen more. The World Health Organization estimates that if we go as we are doing now, as slowly, as ignorant, by 2050, we will shift the number of deaths attributed to antibiotic resistance from 7, 700,000 to 10 million per year. 2050, I'm going to be in my 60s, my son is going to be the same age as I am today. So it's time to change that. I mean, we should do something about it. And this sentence has been with me during the past six years that I've been working on my PhD with anti-infective materials at Shalmash University. I kept repeating to myself that now we have all the power. We have equipped labs. We have the knowledge. We have a good team. We get support and guidance. And if we don't do anything about it, who should? And that is why uh, we came up with this technology. So I'm going to get a little nerdy here, just introduce you to that technology and how this works. So we inspire from how biology and how our own body defend us from infection. We have in our body small types of peptides that simply just kill bacteria when they come in close contact with. The way they do that is just like, imagine a needle. I mean, it just get inserted into the bacterial membrane and disrupt it. Very easy. And due to that unique mechanism of action, bacteria can never get resistant to it. Think about we people. We have been there for millions of years, and bacteria hasn't got resistant to the antimicrobial peptides that we have in our body. And if we manage to implement those antimicrobial peptides into a product, we can make materials and products that can kill bacteria when it comes to close contact with them. And that has been the base of our technology. So now I want you to look at this circle and imagine that is your wound. So this is actually a part of work that we have done in the lab and the bacteria you're going to see in that wound is actually the ones that we have imaged ourselves before and after exposure to our material. And the ones that are shining green means the bacteria are living, that's a staining. And then the ones that are red means dead bacteria. You get the wound, after some minutes you get some bacteria, only after a couple of hours your wound gets saturated with bacteria. And you're, if, if you're unlucky, you can get an infection. But when we have put this material and looked at it again, bam, all the bacteria just died. Can it be more simple than that? 
So that has been the basis of uh, the startup of Amferia. We thought like we need to make that accessible for everyone. And that's why the aim, aim of Amferia is to make medical devices that are antibacterial, that can kill bacteria like that. And of course, we want to expand our products and make it accessible for everyone and to prevent infection as the first line of defending against infection. Like our first product, I thought, was a wound patch, is a wound patch, that can kill bacteria upon contact when you put it on the wound. And unlike many of the antibacterial wound patches that are now in the market, this one not only creates any other resistance problem, it's perfectly safe for the environment and doesn't pose any cytotoxicity to our own cells. So we have also expanded these products into different, uh, because we got interest from different markets. So not only human wound care, we have also emphasized on the veterinary market. Infection with animals is huge, and that will affect us directly as well. And also urinary catheter. The problem with urinary tract infection is huge. Our material has the possibility to be tuned into different products like that. And we're actively working to bring those into the market and make it accessible for everyone. That wouldn't be possible without an amazing team that we have uh, from Shalmesh background. Anand, I, and Martin are the co-founders. And we, are, uh, at the unfair, uh, we, we have our office at AstraZeneca Biohub Venture in Gothenburg, if you ever wanted to meet us. And just in the end, I'm going to finish with a big dream. Our dream is to contribute to this problem of antibiotic resistance. That, that hasn't happened in one night. It's not going to go away in one night. But all we can do is to educate ourselves, be aware of it, and make this place a safer place to live for our children. Thank you so much for listening. Thank, thank you. you for your super oh, important thank you so work. Much. Thank you.